Page 155, Wednesday, October 4th. I type these journal entries and my homework assignments on the little PC clone up in my bedroom. For anything major like a school report, I use Dad's big IBM, which is down in an alcove off the great room. Dad has a CD-ROM encyclopedia, a fax modem, and a web navigator that gets hundreds of informational services. I can find out anything about anything without ever leaving the chair. Tonight, I was down in the alcove searching for information on tangerines when Mom announced, I've got people coming over tonight, Paul. You might want to work upstairs. Who's coming? It's a meeting of the Homeowners Association. I think it's going to be a loud one. Why is that? Mr. Costello has been getting a lot of phone calls about a lot of different things. There's the termite problem, and there have been break-ins over on his side of the development. Robberies? Yes. People are talking about organizing a neighborhood watch patrol, or even hiring a real guard to sit in the guardhouse. She stopped and looked at me. You haven't heard anything about break-ins, have you? Are kids involved? I haven't heard a thing. Joey hasn't said anything to you? No. The doorbell rang. I went back to my search as the homeowners started to arrive. I could hear them filing behind me. The yellow tutor, the York with the three-car garage, and a loud group from Joey Street. The street where all the houses are getting blue tents put over them. I stopped working when Mr. Costello came in. I rolled my chair to the entrance of the alcove so he could see me. Hi, Paul. How's it going? Fine, Mr. Costello. Mr. Costello's face has looked lined and tired ever since Mike got killed. He carried a thick black appointment book in one hand. He walked to the kitchen end of the great room and sat quietly. All right, let's get started. The meeting began with the town meetings we used to have in social studies class. Treasurer's report, old business, new business. I move. I second the motion. I turned my attention back to the computer screen when I heard a man call out. What's with Donnelly's house? Looks like something that landed from outer space. I rolled my chair back and watched Mr. Costello. He checked his notes and said, All right, Mr. Donnelly applied for per permission to install a lightning rod on the roof of his house. The architectural committee, because of his unique problem, did approve that addition. But then, for some reason, Mr. Donnelly went and installed a series of ten lightning rods across the top of his roof. Does look odd. Looks like hell. Mom spoke up. The Architectural Committee has sent Mr. Donnelly a strongly worded letter about it. I think he clearly took advantage of us. What are you going to do about it? As I just said, we sent him a letter. I had hoped he would show up tonight so we would work this out. If he doesn't respond, we will take further action. Another homeowner stood up. I've been keeping track of our fish population, what there is of it, and I'd like to announce that it is now down to zero. As far as I can tell, we have zero fish left in that pond. Mr. Costello nodded grimly and flipped to another page. You're probably right, Ralph. The koi appear to be, to be all gone. We're not sure why, but we think someone may have stolen them. I thought, think again, Mr. Costello. Your koi are a gourmet meal for the ospreys and on Route 89. Another voice called out, what about the muck fire? Mr. Costello knew right where to flip for this one. All right. We've certainly heard your complaints about the muck fire, and we certainly share your distaste for it. Since our last meeting, Mr. Porter and I have contacted the Tangerine Fire Department on three different occasions. Mr. Costello began to read directly from his notes. The captain there basically told us that he can't do anything about it. We said, why don't you pour water on it until it goes out? And he said, why don't you? So we did. Mr. Costello slammed his book closed with one hand. We hired a contractor to sink four wells in the muckfire field. We rented pumps and spraying equipment and started saturating the area last month. To make a long story short, the muckfire is still burning, and now we have swarms of mosquitoes breeding in the swamp that we created out there. I heard Mom speak up again. These mosquitoes carry encephalitis. Two children died in Tangerine last year after they were bitten by mosquitoes. Mr. Costello nodded gravely. Right. We've already contracted... We've already contacted the county about it. They have a spray truck that is for hire. Starting tomorrow night, they will drive through our development spraying a cloud of insecticide every other evening until the mosquito problem is under control. Do not, I repeat, do not allow your kids to ride their bikes behind the spray truck. They'd be inhaling a powerful pesticide. Also, you should keep your pets inside. You should move any delicate plants from your porches, patios, whatever, 
into the house. Everyone got quiet at the thought of the spray truck spewing insecticide every other night. Finally, the man who had asked about Mr. Donnelly's house said, Okay, what about all the robberies? Mr. Costello opened his book once again and addressed the man. The Sheriff's Department has assigned someone to our case, Sergeant Edwards. He looked at the rest of the homeowners. For those of you who don't know, five of the houses that were tested for bugs have been robbed of jewelry, watches, and other valuables. The man interrupted. My lawyer tells me that the exterminator is required by law to either post a guard or to arrange for guards to patrol around the houses that are tented. That may be true, Dan, but our local guy says he was not aware of that law. He should have been. It's his business. Maybe so, but I've talked to the guy and his attitude is that you'd have to be crazy to go into a house that's been pumped full of deadly poison. Therefore, there's no real threat of anyone doing it. But somebody is doing it. Somebody busted in my patio doors with a baseball bat, too. And whether his attitude likes it or not, he's liable for that and for my missing property. Mr. Costello turned his palms upward. He answered patiently. If you think you have a case against him, then by all means pursue it. But is it really worth your time and money to hire a lawyer and go to court just to take some guy's dilapidated pickup truck away? Because that's what it'll come down to. That's just the way it is around here. The homeowners just sat there glumly until Mr. Costello said, Okay, somebody move to adjourn. I turned back to the computer as the meeting broke up. I took out the disc and got into Dad's personal library, looking for another information service. I saw a file listing that had definitely not been there before. I would never have missed seeing this. Eric. Scholarship offers. I looked around for Dad. He and Mom were saying goodbye to people in the foyer, so I clicked on Eric's scholarship offers. The file was two pages long. It was carefully designed like someone had spent a lot of time thinking about it. Each page was filled with rectangular boxes stacked on top of each other. But get this, the boxes were light green football fields with white grid lines at tenured intervals. Over the green and white fields printed in red were vital statistics. Each box contained the name of a university, its address and phone number, and the name of its head football coach. The top three boxes on page one were set up for the University of Florida, Florida State University, and the University of Miami. Ohio State had a box on page one. So did Notre Dame, Penn State, and the University of Nebraska. It didn't look like any of these schools had expressed any interest in Eric. Not yet. I scrolled to page two and found some that had. Rice University, Baylor University, and the University of Houston had sent letters to Eric. From the dates of the letters, they must all have contacted him at the same time, right after his junior year in Houston. Dad, apparently, had not written back to any of them. I heard the front door close, so I quickly clicked out of the file. But I'll be back.